So today we will see the verse number twelve point eight. So chapter is uh, devotional service. So today's verse is very important because the essence of the complete total chapter twelve is there in this particular verse. So let us try to understand in detail what is mentioned in this verse. निवशिष्यसि अत ऊर्ध न संशय निवशिष्यसि संशय मय्येवा मन आदत्व निवेशया निवेशयासी मय्येवाशिष्यसीय संशय मय एवा मन आधस्व निवासीय निवासीय what to a translation mai mai upon me upon me eva eva certainly certainly mana mana mind mind adatsva adatsva fix fix mai mai upon me upon me buddhim buddhim intelligence intelligence nivashishya nivashishya apply apply निवशिष्यसि यू विल लिव मयि इन मी एवा एवा सटेनली अत ऊर्धम अत ऊर्धम देयर आफ्टर देयर आफ्टर ना नेवर नेवर संशयः संशयः डाउट 
ट्रांसलेशनल पदपोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस जेसी बलवेदान गोस्वामी शिल प्रपाद शिल प्रपाद की जस्ट फिक्स योर माइंड अपॉन मी द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड एंड एंगेज ऑल योर इंटेलिजेंस इन मी दस यू विल लिव इन मी ऑलवेज विदाउट ए डाउट ओके सो बेसिकली इफ वी सी द ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर स्टार्टेड विथ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अर्जुना अर्जुना आस्क ए क्वेश्चन विच इज देर as a doubt in all of us which is whether worshiping impersonal brahman is superior or worshiping personal form of you is a superior this is the doubt everybody else have because there are different schools of thoughts uh, we are all you know learning so majority of the people believe that god is impersonal so krishna is clearing the doubt in this chapter and also uh he mentioned in the previous uh, verses if you see krishna first he mentioned that worshiping personal form is the greatest and uh, in one word he mentioned that a transcendent list can also worship impersonal brahman but worshiping impersonal brahman the process of worshiping impersonal brahman is troublesome so it's not that you will not get perfection you may get perfection after many lifetimes so if you are in the path of worshiping impersonal brahma so that's why krishna clearly mentioned in one verse decided that worshiping impersonal brahma is not the perfect way of achieving the uh, liberation or maybe achieving the highest goal so then the rest of the complete chapter he talks about devotional service to the personal form of the lord okay so although the whole chapter should should be around these two questions that uh, arjuna asked so he answered in one verse only for the impersonal brahman and the rest all he is talking about the personal form of the god so that is the importance that we need to understand that you know if the whole chapter is talked about devotional service to the personal form of the god that means the personal form is the superior over uh, impersonal brahman this is what we need to understand so that is one thing that krishna has established that worshiping personal form is the superior over worshiping impersonal form and the next he also explained about the bhakti so it is very important that we all do devotional service to personal form of krishna so that he will be the swift deliverer so this is also something that krishna mentioned in the previous verses so now we all understood that worshiping personal form and doing the devotional service to the personal form is important now how to do that so that's what krishna is going to talk about in the next four verses five verses from 12.8 to 12.12 krishna is going to talk about different levels of bhakti okay so the highest level of bhakti he start first and he will go to the lowest level of bhakti so today first he is talking about he is talking about highest level of bhakti so in this verse he mentioned two things one is mayeva mana adatsva mana means mind so fix your mind on me this is the first thing that he is telling which is part of pure devotional service mayeva mana adatsva mai buddhim niveshaya my buddhi niveshaya means fix your intelligence also on me fix your mind on me fix your intelligence on me prabhupada in part clearly mentioned that uh fixing the mind and fixing the intelligence on krishna means our this is spiritualizing ourselves and krishnaizing ourselves so this is krishna consciousness okay uh actually prabhupada when he is talking in what what he is mentioning is fixing the mind and fixing the intelligence both are at the same level this is the level 1 bhakti okay when you when you talk about the devotional service the first option for doing a devotional service is fixing the mind and fixing the intelligence even baldev vidyabhushan in his purport he mentioned the same thing but whereas vishwanath chakravarti talks purport if you refer he mentioned the top most devotion is fixing the mind 
the next top most devotion is fixing the intelligence that means within the fixing fixing the mind and within fixing the intelligence although it, both are considered uh, to be the same at same level by Prabhupada, but whereas if you refer to uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's uh, uh, purport, he mentioned clearly that the fixing the mind is at the top level and fixing the intelligence is the next level. So now we need to understand how we need to fix our mind. What is the difference between fixing the mind in uh, uh, Krishna and fixing the uh, intelligence in Krishna? What is the difference? Why the fixing the mind is the topmost compared to fixing the intelligence? This we need to understand. So in the hierarchy of the senses, if you see, cross senses are at the bottom level. Okay. So above which mind, above which intelligence, above which soul, above which super soul. Okay. So when in the hierarchy, if you see, intelligence in the topmost compared to mind. Whereas, when the consciousness is coming, fixing the mind is on the topmost compared to fixing the intelligence. Why? So, so, we need to understand what do you mean by fixing the mind and fixing the intelligence. First, we will understand what is the meaning of fixing the intelligence. Fixing the intelligence means understanding scriptures. Using our intelligence to read Bhagavad Gita, to read Srimad Bhagavatam and understand about Krishna. So this is not the topmost. This is just a learning about Krishna so that we will develop love for Krishna. So that's why when you read scriptures, when you understand scriptures, when you understand what Krishna told in Bhagavad Gita, then we may develop love for Krishna. Then we will enter into fixing the mind. That is Bhava Bhakti. Okay. So Fixing the mind means emotion also attached in the devotion. Fixing the intelligence does not mean or there is a love. You may be a scholar. You may be uh, uh, you may be great in understanding what is uh, you know. You may be able to talk about Krishna everywhere. But, you know feelings for Krishna when you don't have love for Krishna when you don't have uh, you know bhava bhakti. That means you are not at the top level devotee. Okay, so that's why fixing the mind is the topmost compared to fixing the intelligence. So, who is the devotee who fixed his mind on Krishna? To consider an example, gopis are the devotees who always fix their mind in the Krishna. So, how do they fix their mind in the Krishna? Even while they are milking from the cow. They fix their mind on Krishna. They keep thinking about Krishna only, always. Even when they are crushing the uh, grains, they think about Krishna. Even when they are churning the uh, buttermilk, they think about Krishna. Even when they are, uh, you know, pasting the cow dung on the walls, they think about Krishna. Even when they are sprinkling the water uh, on the floors of Vrindavan, they think about Krishna. Anything that they do, even when they are sweeping, when they are cooking, when they are doing anything, they are always thinking about Krishna. This is fixing the mind on Krishna. In fact, gopis cannot take away their mind from Krishna even for a moment. Okay. So at one one in, it comes in Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10. Narada Mahamuni came to Vrindavan, and that time he has uh, seen gopis are meditating. So then he asked uh, uh, gopis, what are you meditating upon? You are always thinking about Krishna. What are you meditating upon? So then gopis says, that is the problem. We are always thinking about Krishna. We want to keep our mind away from Krishna for a few seconds. That way we are meditating, they say. So that is the level of, uh, you know, um, fixing the mind by gopis on Krishna. So we cannot do this. If we cannot do this, what we should do? How we can develop love for Krishna to achieve to the level of gopis? So we have to fix our intelligence first. Okay. Then below that, fixing our senses on Krishna service. That is below it. So we may be, you know, when it comes to devotional service, we, we are actually assigned with some task in for some festivals or something like Janmashtami celebrations we have done. Okay. In Janmashtami, 
there are some devotees who actually plan the Jalmas, Jalmashtami celebration. They must have sat for, you know, hours together, drafted their plan, complete program plan done, and who has to take which service and uh, how to conduct. Everything we must have planned. Okay, there are some few devotees who have planned. And there are some devotees who are taking the service, one of the service. Okay, somebody at a, you know, chapel stand, somebody at DT, somebody at book distribution, somebody at kitchen, somebody at vessel cleaning, like that's different, different services we have taken. Now, doing the service is difficult or planning is difficult. Planning is difficult. That's why intelligence is required for planning the whole festival, right? So intelligence is on the top compared to engaging the senses in the service when it comes to devotional service, okay? So all the intelligence is top when it compared to engaging the senses in the devotional service. Mind engaging in Krishna is topmost. That's what gopis are doing. If you cannot engage your mind, engage your intelligence. If you cannot engage in your intelligence in the Krishna service, engage your senses in Krishna service. Okay. So, yeah. So, intelligence is on top of mind when it comes to the hierarchy of the senses because mind wanders for many things, but intelligence has to control mind what to take, what not to take. So, whatever mind desires, the senses will act. So, to control, if, if the mind is not controlled by intelligence, then mind will use the senses for gratification. Then we will end up nowhere. Okay. So, that's why intelligence is on top in the uh, senses hierarchy, but fixing the mind is difficult compared to fixing the intelligence. Okay. So, if you, if you, even if you consider chanting, so chanting is also an effort that we are putting in. But we are not physically putting in any effort, right? Uh, what are we doing in the chanting? We are just moving the lips and moving the hand. That's all we are doing. Let us say if we have to chant for eight hours. So how much stress we will feel? Huh? So whereas if you if if somebody asks you to go and clean hundred vessels, how much stress you will feel? Which one is easy? Eight, eight hours of chanting is easy or uh, uh, eight hours of cleaning vessels is easy. <laughs> so that is the difficult in fixing the mind. Okay. So that's why um, although we are physically strained, it is not really giving us strain. In fact, when it, mind strain is more because when we are chanting also, our mind is keep going here and there. We have to bring back our mind and concentrate on Krishna, uh, Nama, and then we do chanting, right? So this is very difficult process. So that's why fixing the mind is on top priority. If you can do that, that means you are a pure devotee. You are on top of all devotees. So there is no other devotee who can be best than that. So this is about fixing the mind. So when it comes to fixing the intelligence, so There is a story about fish. Okay, fish story is there. Uh, we have to use our intelligence to become a devotee, basically, right? Uh, there is a fisherman who used to come to the lake every day and he catch fish using his fishing net. So, so many fishes are caught in the fishing net, but there is one fish which is intelligent, which is not caught by the fisherman. And like that, there are so many days, so many days that fish is escaping from the fisherman's net. And one of the fish asked, how are you escaping from fishing fisherman's net? Then the fish said, you know, when fisherman comes and throws the net, I won't be in the net. I will go and stay at his feet so that net will always be away from his feet and I will be saved from his net. So this is the intelligence. Okay, so if you apply your intelligence, so in this story, the fisherman is Krishna and the fishing net is Maya. If we are caught by Maya, if we don't want to be caught by Maya, we should be 
surrendering to lotus feet of Krishna. So, with this, we can understand that we have to use our intelligence to surrender to Krishna. If you don't surrender to Krishna, we have to surrender to Maya. So, so from, from this fish story, we should understand that the intelligence means not the material intelligence. Intelligence means surrendering to Krishna. Even uh, if you consider uh, Ramadasur, Ramadasur is also an intelligent, right? So, he is a Pandit also. He has read all the Vedas and he knows all scriptures. And what did he, do? What did he try with his intelligence? He tried to build a staircase to heaven. Right? And uh, even Hiranyakashpu is an intelligent. With his intelligence, what he tried? He did a great tapasya and tried to become immortal. Right? So, this is not real intelligence. Why? Because did their intelligence help them? Did their intelligence save them? Did Ramadasur, uh, uh, you know, could go to Swarga, heaven? Or did Hiranyakashpu become immortal? No. Whereas if you see Prahlad Maharas, Ambarish Maharas, okay, how their intelligence is used? They surrender to Krishna. They, they surrendered, with their intelligence, they understood Krishna's supremacy and they surrendered to Krishna. This is the real intelligence. That's why, even though there are so many material obstacles that they have, physically, mentally, they could not stop their devotion to Krishna. They continued their devotion and even the God has protected them. That's what Krishna said, I am the swift deliverer for you if you are fixing your mind on me. Okay. So, that is one thing that we need to understand. Next. Nivashishyati Mayeva. That means if you are becoming a devotee, like fixing your mind on Krishna, then you will live in me. That's what Krishna is telling. So, what is the meaning of living in Krishna? Does that mean that not living in this material world? So, example, we can consider work from home. Okay, so nowadays all the software engineers are working from home, right? So when they are working from home, they are connected to internet through VPN, their office network. Although they are sitting at home, they are sitting in office network as good as sitting in office virtually. That means if you are connected with a virtual VPN, then you are as good as sitting in office, although you are at home. So, this is what we can understand in, you know, understanding that living in Krishna. If you are fixing your mind, it is a virtual VPN. You are always fixing your mind so that you are living in spiritual world, although you are in material world. So, what will happen? What is the benefit of being like this? If you are like this, you can be getting rid of all karmic reactions. If you are doing all your activities in Krishna consciousness and, uh, you know, every day morning you do, you do the sadhana bhakti and you fix your mind, whatever sadhana bhakti that we are doing is to fix our mind. If you can do that, definitely we will get a benefit of, you know, uh, you know, no need to be taking the reactions of karmas that we have. How can we say this? Is there any proof that, you know, a devotee, although he has done a lot of things in the past, can he be, you know, freed from all the karmic reactions? Is there any devotee like that? We have, we, we have an example from Srimad Bhagavatam. It is there in Canto 9, Chapter 2. Canto 9, Chapter 2, the devotee name is Prushatra. 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 Prushatra was a Manu has ten sons. Out of which Prushatra is one son. Manu wanted all the sons to go to Gurukul. And uh, he sent all his ten sons to Vashishta Mahamuni. Vashishta was a spiritual master for 
all the ten sons of Manu, out of which one son is Prushatra. So Vashishta has given one uh, service to Prushatra, and the service is you have to take care of cows in the night time because the uh, Vashishta Muni is ashram is in uh, forest, and uh, there are so many wild animals and uh, cow can be having a threat life threat with wild animals so this how to safeguard the cows from these wild animals so pushyatra has given one uh, you know service that he has to take care of cows in the night time night time means all darkness that too in the forest okay pushyatra was safeguarding those uh, cows and uh, for a few moments, he could not take care of the cows, and a tiger came and caught one cow, and it has taken away. Then Prashantra realized when cow was shouting to save, save uh, to get safeguarded. So Prashantra was could not see anything what is happening because it was all dark, but he could hear you know the sound that cow is making to save to save. Then he followed the sound and he, he ran into the forest to save the cow. After some time, he reached the cow and then he has a sword in his hand and he killed. Uh, he did not realize whom he is actually killing. Actually, he killed cow instead of tiger. Because it was completely dark, he thought he was killing a tiger, but he killed cow. So it was a great thing. The next day morning when he saw, there was a completely dead body of the cow. Then uh, Vashishta Muni, uh, you know, was very angry that you being a Kshatriya, you have to take care of cows, but you killed a cow. So this is a, in a great sin. So I am going to curse you to become a Shudra. Because Shudra kill cows and they eat cows. So you become a cow. Yeah, sorry, you become a Shudra. This is the curse that Vashishta Muni gave to uh, Shudra. So then he realized that he has done a great mistake. Then he wants to go for atonement. So what did he do? He understood atonement that can give him, you know, that can free him from this sin. Okay, what he did is he understood that only the pure devotion to Krishna can save him. So he started chanting Krishna name and he has become pure devotee and he reached to a stage of Bhava Bhakti. Then when he reached to the stage of Bhava Bhakti, in the forest fire, he found one, one day forest fire and uh, he was in that state. If you can refer to the verse number 14 in chapter 2, uh, canto 9. In that, Pushatra entered into the fire of the forest, uh, forest fire because he was already in Krishna consciousness. He was doing all his activities in Krishna consciousness. Complete his mind is immersed in Krishna. So he entered into the fire and he left the body and he has gone to spiritual world. What happened to the thirst that Vasishta Muni gave for Pushatra? No. There is no karmic reaction for Prashantra because he is the devotee. If you can surrender yourself at the lotus feet of Krishna, there is no karmic reaction for all our sins. Okay, whatever we have done unknowingly, knowingly in the past, before we become devotee, so all the karmic reactions will go. This is the proof that Prashantra is alive. Okay, that means you don't have to be worried about what I have done in my past life, what I have done before I become a devotee, all my karmic reactions become zero as soon as we surrender to Krishna. That's what Krishna mentioned even in Bhagavad Gita, in one of the verse coming, coming chapters, he mentioned that now whatever may be the things that you have done in the past, you surrender to me, that is the ultimate dharma. That's why he mentioned sarva dharma parintyacha mamekam sharanam raja. So we all think, you know, doing that charity, this charity, or maybe, you know, taking care of, you know, family, you know, taking care of, uh, you know, people who are in distress, 
we think that is real dharma actual dharma is not that dharma is to surrender to krishna that's why krishna says i come every yuga when to establish dharma so what is the dharma that he wants to establish he want to establish dharma means a real dharma paro dharma uh, the real dharma is devotion krishna consciousness is the real dharma that's why we all should become devotees so that we can also be getting rid of all this kind of you know sins and uh, and there are scholars you know saying when, uh, when when an intelligent scholar you know he reads bhagavad gita and says that you know i understand complete bhagavad gita or maybe shrimad bhagavata and they start teaching bhagavad gita and bhagavata everywhere but they don't understand the essence of bhagavad gita okay that's the reason we should follow bhagavad gita as it is and we should understand prabhupada move and understand what is really important the the chapter 12 talks really about pure devotional service so actually this particular chapter is the complete essence of you know bhagavad gita and in that 12.8 if you consider it is the pure devotion is what we have to achieve after understanding bhagavad gita okay but becoming a scholar on bhagavad gita does not mean that you know we become a devotee right so to understand this i will tell you one small story and i will end here there is a village man and uh, in the british side and that village man does not know english and he want to prove himself that he is a great scholar in english okay <laughs> so then what did he do he he try to learn english from somebody while somebody is talking okay he learned three words what are the three words he learned yes second word no third word thank you these are the three words that he learned then he uh, you know occasionally he used these three words and says that i am a scholar in english so externally he learned english but not actual english then wherever he go he started talking in english this yes no thank you then everybody is uh, you know you know amazed this guy knows very good english then one day what happened a robber came to the village and uh, robbed the village and they framed this guy in that robbery okay <laughs> so then what happened a police people came and uh, they caught him and they have taken him to uh, court they made this uh, village man stand in front of the judge then judge asked um in which language you want to talk i will ask three questions so that uh, you can answer me then the village man said i want to talk in english <laughs> <laughs> i want to talk in english because he want to prove that he is an english in front of the judge okay then he asked a few questions uh the first question is that uh, have you done the robbery then he said <laughs> yes now are you the only one who did the robbery and nobody else there in, along with you while nobody else have seen you uh, you know doing the robbery then he said no are you sure are you sure of what uh, you know punishment that you are going to get you are going to get the punishment that you know you will be sent into the jail uh, forever then he said thank you so that means see knowing the knowledge externally does not mean that is the real knowledge knowing the knowledge does not mean knowing bhagavad gita does not mean that we are a devotee we should first understand that we should surrender to krishna and then learn bhagavad gita so that will really give us a real knowledge that is the uh, knowledge that we are engaging that is the intelligence that we are really we are engaging in krishna service if you cannot do that we will not follow the instructions of bhagavad gita we will simply read maybe there are people who say that i have done bhagavad gita parayan for 100 times 200 times there are right even before we come to krishna conscious we all did maybe that is the piety that we have and we could learn bhagavad gita from prabhupada today right so otherwise we don't maybe some sukruti got added with that by you know 
reciting bhagavad gita verse 700 verses for 700 times okay the sukriti got added but that does not mean that we develop a love for krishna that does not mean that we become a pure devotee at least in the next life we may you know contact with a pure devotee and understand the essence of bhagavad gita and follow the instructions of krishna and do and and, uh, and do real devotional service eventually we will live in krishna otherwise we will live in maya so that is the essence of today's verse and uh, this is the first level of devotion and the second level of devotion maybe we will see next week 12.9 he talks about if you cannot fix your mind if you cannot fix your intelligence in me at least do sadhana bhakti okay follow regulative principles and do sadhana bhakti under the instructions of spiritual master this is what krishna is going to talk about in the next verse we will see next verse to next week. thank you very much hare krishna